Dear Authorized Service, You are recommended to watch this video describing the points to be considered during or before commissioning our firefighting boosters. Before starting the commissioning process, ensure that you check whether the area where the firefighting booster will be operating and the relevant installations comply with the firefighting booster commissioning control list delivered in the package of the booster. Ensure that the machine room where the firefighting booster will be activated is free of dust that may block the air filter of the diesel engine. Also, please ventilate the space with clean air. Check air leakage of the expansion vessel connected to the pilot pump by using soap bubbles. If there is any air leakage, change the expansion vessel. Check the air charge the tank assure that the air pressure is 10% less than the starting pressure of the pilot. Check if the location of the booster contains a water drainage outlet. Ensure that the booster is anchored to a flat surface from chassis. Check grounding of the unit. Ensure that the room where the diesel engine is located have inlet and outlet vents enabling air circulation. Check the distance of the diesel engine radiator to the wall, ensuring minimum 1 meter distance. Ensure that the diesel engine's exhaust pipe is connected to outside by one size bigger pipes to enable the exhaust gas delivered easily to open air. Continue to enlarge the pipe diameter one size more in every 4 to 5 meters if the distance is long. Put a flap at the end of the exhaust pipe. Mount an electrical fan which starts with the engine at the end of the pipe, if the exhaust pipe is very long. Check to see that the suction pipes of the pumps to reservoir tank connections of the pipes having the right size, enabling suction by pilot. P1 electrical and P2 diesel pumps. Ensure that the delivery and suction collectors are suspended from or fixed to the ceiling or the floor that will not cause any pipe tension to the pumps. Ensure that the cross sections of the cables connected to the P1 electrical panel are in line with the kilowatts of the electrical motor. Open the relief port nut of the pilot, P1 electrical and P2 diesel pumps and discharge the air one by one. Install the pneumatic hose that is 8 millimeters in diameter to the pneumatic hose unions on the collector to establish its connection with the reservoir tank. Run the pilot pump to check the motor rotation is right. If the motor rotation is correct, run the pilot pump, pressurize the system and wait for it to stop automatically. Enable communication between the pumps by plugging in the monitoring plugs of the pilot. P1 electrical and P2 diesel pumps on the alarm panel. Supply energy to the panel by turning on the main switch. Check the LEDs on the alarm panel, pushing the button located at the bottom of the control panel. Run the P1 pump manually to check the electrical motor rotation is correct. If the electrical motor rotation is correct, switch from manual to automatic and run for 10 minutes at wait stop period. countdown is over, the pump stops automatically and P1 electrical pump becomes ready to run. Check the oil, water, antifreeze and fuel levels of the diesel engine. Ensure the rectifiers are activated by plugging the cable with printed plug, which is connected to the diesel panel, to 220 volt socket. Ensure the engine block heater is working. Connect the P2 diesel engine to the battery. 
Connect the terminal number 50 to its respective position on the starter engine. After switching to automatic mode, P2 diesel pump automatically stops after one minute. That is the wait stop period and becomes ready to run. Once the firefighting booster is activated, follow these steps in order. It will be ready to step in in case of any fire.